Hello and welcome to Justin DeWire Artistry. Today I'm going to share with you five tips that are going to help you to improve your portrait drawing. I'm going to demonstrate by drawing a portrait in charcoal and I'm going to show you step by step how to do it. Of course I'll enrich your knowledge by sharing with you some more art history and we'll take a look at some of the great portrait artists over the years. So I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. Let's get cracking. We're going to start today's drawing off with tip number one which is all about measuring for accuracy. If you want to achieve a good likeness in your portrait, then accuracy in your measurements is going to be critical. So the biggest mistake that I see people making in achieving a good likeness is in rushing the details in the drawing. Slow down and get all of the features mapped out very carefully. Check, does it look like the person? If not, erase it and do it again. Look for the shapes in the face. The face is roughly symmetrical. It will have two eyes, a nose, a mouth and a chin. Measure the spaces between those objects and compare them. For example, in some people, the distance from the eyebrow down to the mouth is the same as the distance across the eyes from the outside edges. This is just an example and it isn't true of everyone. So make your own measurements every time you draw someone to double check. If you measure very carefully, then all of the elements will line up and the person will appear before your very eyes. A portrait can be described as being a representation of a person. The representation can be conveyed through a wide array of mediums and styles. The fundamental principle that makes a representation a portrait is that it relates to a specific person and is not just any human being, but one specific human being. This representation will convey details about the person and will include a physical likeness or focus on specific physical characteristics that the person possesses. It will often include details that are prominent in a person's life such as a musician being portrayed with an instrument or sheet music in the background. Other elements may be presented in a realistic or symbolic manner, for example a king or an emperor will have a crown or other regal symbol of power. Tip number two. Step back from your work frequently. To build up the picture, you need to look at the whole picture. If you obsess over one little detail, you can lose the big picture. Stop every few minutes and step back. Look away from the drawing and let your mind focus on something else for a few seconds. Now look at the drawing again. Note where your eyes travel to first. That is your focal point. Is it where you want the focal point to be? Look at where your gaze travels next. Is it where you want it to travel? Correct the problems you see and then step back again. Have another look. What do you see that needs fixing next? Keep building up your drawing in this way, layer by layer by layer. Early cave paintings contain images that refer to humans but it is unclear whether they refer to a specific person. Some of the earliest remaining examples of portraiture relate to burial rituals of various cultures. Funeral masks, ceremonial coffins, statues and wall carvings can be related to specific rulers, generals or other important people from antiquity. While early examples of these can be highly stylistic and can be more representative of an ideal rather than an individual, by the 14th century BCE, Egyptian artists began creating representations of individuals that can be supported by archaeological evidence. Other cultures created portraits, but the unique climate of Egypt has resulted in preservation of samples, which has not been the case in many other places. There is literary evidence of painted portraiture in Greek and Roman times, but few examples remain. More examples of sculpture remain, and following the death of Alexander the Great, many rulers' portraits were to be found on coins. Tip number three. Don't be afraid of the eraser. Don't be precious about any single part of your drawing. The whole image is more important than any single detail. If something isn't working, then don't be afraid to change it. Drawing is a process of trial and error. You add to the image, and then you need to evaluate what's changed. Stepping back and looking is important, but being brave with the eraser is just as important. If it isn't right, fix it. Following the fall of the Roman Empire, most artwork returned to a highly stylized form. Many of the artworks were religious in nature and the depiction of the ideal was sought rather than the individual. During the late Middle Ages and early Renaissance, artists began returning to individual representations again. Many donors of paintings for churches were included in the religious scenes playing the part of important religious figures in the paintings. 
Tip number four. Look at your reference just as much as you look at your drawing. If you're looking at the drawing all the time, you don't know what you're adding. You're making it up as you go. You're making assumptions. Don't make assumptions. Draw what you can see. That's the best way to get a good likeness of a realistic representation of a person. Look for the big shapes first. Map those out. Get them marked in. Once all the big shapes are in, and they're all lined up with each other, then start to look for the finer details. Look at the lines. Where do they start and stop? Are they clear lines, or just a subtle change in tone? Look for the little details, and just start to add them in. You can't draw it if you can't see it, so look often. Don't draw your assumptions. They will be wrong. Look at what is there, and then try your best to copy it. If you make a mistake, rub it out and go again. During the Renaissance, artists emerged above the tradesman's status that they had previously held. Advances in materials, methods and technical understanding of the world around them led to great improvements in art during this time. All across Europe, artists were discovering new and better ways to represent the world around them through increasing realism. Netherlands painter Jan van Eyck led the way in both developing oil painting technique and using it to create portraits of the powerful and affluent. Some of the notable artists who followed on from Van Eyck included the German Albrecht Dürer, Italians Raphael and Leonardo da Vinci. Tip number five. Practice makes perfect. Have fun with your drawings and you'll want to return to them often. Return to them often and you'll improve quickly. Improve at them and you will enjoy it more. The cycle repeats and you continue to improve. Everyone starts out with no skill, knowledge or understanding of what to do or how to do it. We all have to learn how to draw one drawing at a time. While some people may have more natural ability than others, we can all still improve and get better. Don't get frustrated if the drawing didn't go well. This is an opportunity for you to improve. You can always try again. Look at what went well and try and apply the principle to what didn't go well. Did you rush the measuring and end up with a face that was out of proportion? Well then try again next time, only measure more carefully and you will see improvement. Did you spend too much time with your face in your drawing and didn't step back to look? Well next time, try and step back more often and you will see improvement. Everybody can improve, no matter how good or bad they think they are. Portraits over the years have been a medium for conveying the fashion of the day. At the opposite end of the scale from the high society portrait painters was Francisco de Goya, who painted himself in his sickbed following near-fatal illness that left the Spanish painter deaf. Goya had his fair share of successes with court portraits, but is well known for also producing grotesque images from mythology. One of the most explosive periods of change occurred around the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th centuries. The extreme realism of previous eras gave way to experiments in light, colour and form in light of increases in social, psychological and scientific understanding. Modern artists such as the Frenchman Paul Cézanne flattened form into shapes and colours, while French artist Paul Gauguin flattened and returned to a primitive stylized method. Other artists, such as the Dutch Vincent van Gogh, pursued colour and line to convey psychological and spiritual representation, while the Norwegian Edvard Munch pursued internal expression of ideas and feelings. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please click that like button. To see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to click the bell to receive notifications of every time I put a new video out. If you have anything you want to say, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below. I love to hear what you think. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Have a wonderful day and bye bye.